Hey, how you doing? So welcome to this week's One Image Made It. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate the famous Portra 400 ISO film. So I used to shoot with this all the time. It was a uh, a go-to film that for a lot of photographers back in the day, and it's still used today. Um, but the Portra 400 was just absolutely beautiful for taking portraits because of its soft, elegant vibe to it. So I'm going to show you how to recreate that as close as possible within Lightroom. So this is the uh, the after. So this is kind of what we're going for. Portra 400 was very known for this uh, lovely kind of green tinge to the images and uh, these really soft looking pale skin tones that were slightly overexposed because the Portra 400 really, really liked to be overexposed ever so slightly. Uh, that was when it came into its own. So I'm going to reset this and just walk you through the process. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mat off the whites and the blacks. So I'm going to come down to the tone curve and just mat the whites by bringing the tone curve down. And I'm going to do the same with the blacks and just push them up a little bit there. I'm going to make a couple of points on here. So I'm going to click here where the blacks are and where the greys are just so I can isolate these blacks and just bring them down a little bit and then mat these off a tad more. There we go. Now I'm going to push the uh, the, the mid-tones, I'm going to push them up a little bit because we, I want to get into that overexposing kind of area just, just within the mid-tones there. So I'm going to now come back up to the basic panel and walk you through this. So because of that overexposure, I'm going to push this up. Now, depending on your image, will determine how far you want to push this. Um, I wouldn't go above a stop usually, but for this, I reckon just, just under a stop is good. About, so I'm at 0 0.80 of a stop, so an eighth of a stop, just a little bit over exposing there. So the film was notoriously known for being very flat. So we want to try and bring that contrast back out. So around minus 30 is good. That's going to give us uh, a little bit more emphasis on that matte look that we've tried to create. So I'm going to bring the highlights right down to around minus 45, 46 around there. Just bring them down again. We're just flattening the image, but we're going to bring some contrast back later by adding grain. Uh, and we're going to also play around with the colors and the textures and the clarity. So we'll be able to bring some of this back, but in different areas. So I'm going to push the shadows up to around plus 80. OK, just so we can get that real flat vibe going on. There we go. That looks good. And then let's just bring these whites down to around minus 50. 50 again depending on your image but around minus 50 is good that's going to give us a real nice flat look so let's move to the texture and let's just bring that down so minus about minus 25 is good i'm going to push that a little bit further on this particular shot here and then same with the dehaze as well so i'm actually going to pull that down as you can see as i pull that down that is adding haze to it so I'm kind of using that to my advantage so about minus five seven that's that's quite good that gives us this uh, this lovely kind of hazy look and if you just look at the before and after just from that basics panel there you can see that I've really flattened out that image and made all of the tones pretty much pretty much the same and that's that's a good basis for us to then start messing around with the color and uh, get it looking a little bit more like the Portra 400 that we all love. So let's start with the HSL panel. So I'm on the hue, saturation and luminance. So the hues, I'm going to push the reds up towards the orange area because that's that's where they were. They were, they were a little bit more teal, that kind of areas up there. Um, and then the, the greens, let's push them up as well because it was more of a um, more of an aqua feel. The greens were, were more of this lovely aqua vibe to them in the skin tones. So let's just push that up to around plus 75. And then with the blues, let's just bring these down so they're more into the aqua region. So around minus 25, I would say, around there. 
So you can see what we're doing. We're just pushing them blues and greens into that aqua area uh, and just compounding it into the, into that. So the aqua is quite strong. So let's look at the saturation of these colors. Let's go to the reds. Let's bring them down to around minus 30, 31. Same with the yellows. So we want to bring the yellows out of the skin tones. Now it does, it does come down to individual shots here. You may need to push this a little bit higher or a little bit more, uh, a little bit less, depending on the skin tones that you've got. Okay. So let's bring the greens down as well to around minus 50. Um, aqua, I'm going to bring them down not as much, about minus 17, 16, around that area. Blues, I'm going to bring them down a little bit more, about minus 25. And then the purples and magenta, I'm just going to take them out um, because I don't want them present in there at all. Let's have a look at the brightness then. So we just want to bring some of this orange back a little bit. So let's just pull that back to minus 8, minus 10, I would say, actually, just to darken that off a little bit. Same with the greens. I want to take some of this green out. So minus 37, 38 around there is quite good. So the aqua, I want to push this up. So around plus 40, plus 41 looks good. Uh, again, that's starting to now give me very similar tones to what we used to have. Uh, so let's do the same with the blue. Let's go to plus 45, 46, 47. That's quite good around there. That looks that looks really really nice actually. So now we can now we've done that. If we look at the just the colours, what we've done, you can see we've really made the aqua and blue the dominant colours within most of the image. Um, you can even see in her in her eyes, she's got blue eyes, but we've uh, we've managed to actually change change them a little bit, which is what what we're after. Um, and the skin tone is looking quite nice as well. We can come back to this later and uh, and just refine it a little bit more because she's got a little bit of blue on her lips and she looks like she's uh, <laughs> she looks like she's uh, turning into a bit of a zombie. So we'd have to come back and address that after. But let's get the uh, let's get the the color grading down, and then we can address that after. So starting on the let's start on the on the shadows. Why not? So within the shadows. I want to be adding a hue of around 140, 140, 142. So again, we're in that in that green sort of area there, coming into aqua and then into the blue. So it's just a, a hint up here. Now I'm going to push the saturation up to around 18, 19, something like that. Um, Let's just move this around to around 42, 43. Around there, that's quite good. So let's just bring that saturation up. Yeah, about 19. That looks pretty good. And then let's go to the midtones. And within the, the midtones, within the hue, I'm going to add about 245, I would say, around 245. So we're looking down here in the blue spectrum down there. And what I'm gonna do is just add about saturation of about five or eight around there. So that's seven, that's that's quite good. Um, and what this means is that we, we've we got just a little bit of this blue in the midtones because it had a little bit of blue just, just in the midtones, it was ever so slight. That will uh, give us some really, really nice colors. And again, if we look at what we've done there, you can see that we've taken away that that almost that orange and yellow sheen that's across there from messing around with the, the saturation and hues. And we've just really put in that blue and aqua uh, green colors there within the, the mid-tones and the shadows, so the green and the, the, the blue. Uh, so yeah, that's looking, that's looking quite nice, actually. Yeah. That's good. So the next thing then is let's add a little bit of noise reduction. So I'm going to go to about 10 and same with the color. I'm going to push this up. I always do that whenever I've been changing colors just to help, uh, just to help it really help it along. And one important thing is adding some grain to this because the Portra 400, even though 
it had it has some grain it was still a very um it was a very smooth grain even at 400 it wasn't it wasn't really really rough it wasn't um over large if that makes sense you'll know if you've ever shot portrait 400 you'll know exactly what i mean it's got a a vibe to itself so i'm going to push this to plus 20 and i'm going to keep the size at 50 but i'm going to bring the roughness down to 20 as well and that that area there is as close as what i think it is uh yeah it, it's like this so it's 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 present but it's not it's not that rough you can just see it and what what this has enabled us to do now is to just bring back a little bit of contrast it's ever so slight um but it does help just bind all them colors together and bring back a smidgen and the smallest amount of uh of contrast within the image so now what we can do is is, is come back up and and let's just zoom out a little bit and let's just look at this contrast now so i think this could probably go down a little bit more there we go and we can come into these mid-tones here and just tweak them a little bit and remember that the portrait 400 most of the time you would overexpose it ever so slightly just to get the best out of the colors um that's what i used to do anyway and most of the photographers that i worked for they all done that as well d hayes let's just bring that down a little bit so we would need to address the colors a little bit around her lips so we've got to be careful because we've actually if you look there we've taken away some of the color um, and you can see that's affected her face a little bit there can you see so i want to go back into these colors here and i'm going to imagine it's these purples and magentas i will find out in one second because i can hover over and just see what shades they are yeah so it's a mixture of the red and the magenta there so let's let's have a look at this so let's pull that purple out then and yeah it's definitely the magentas there and you can see there's a there's a there's a ever so slight magenta to it so what i want to be doing is just just be careful and not bring that out as much now let's have a look at the hues and the luminance so let's just bring that down yeah 100 percent is that so what i'm going to do is actually do something that's a little bit counterintuitive. I'm going to push the brightness of the magenta up and then just bring down that saturation a little bit. There we go. And also, if we then target the areas here, we can also change the hue. So let's just push that up a little bit there. There we go, that's better. That looks a little bit more natural now. So that is how you do it. And again, with this particular image, I would just go through and I'd probably tweak these a little bit more. Um, you could come up to here. I mean, the, the green and the yellows and the blues, I would avoid using these because it was a very green tinge vibe to it. Uh, if anything, I would probably if you need to change the white balance, just lean more towards the blue, okay? And if you need to change the tint, if you've got too much uh, magenta in it, then, then go towards the green ever so slightly. But if you look at that as a before and after, you can see there that it's taken on pretty much the, the Portra 400 vibe. And uh, I like it. I think it looks really, really good. It's quite close to um, to what it what it used to look like once you've got a print. Um, we could up the grain size a little bit, maybe to 30 on this particular image, just to bring it out a little bit more. But again, depending on your images, you'll have to decide what works best for you. So I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, give it a go. See what your images look like when you use this technique. And uh, yeah, bringing back the Portra 400, which was my go-to film back in the day. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.